Okay, so this is the first lecture in Math 2422. And this lecture introduces the most fundamental concept to data science, the most widely used concept in data science, the thing that you will just know by the time you graduate. It's introducing vectors. Okay. Now, vectors traditionally are taught as um, taught in a standard calculus three course as a way of um, representing uh, maybe displacement, position. Um, let me see what the standard calculus book says. Ah, it says a directed line segment. So I'll write down the context of say maybe. Uh, from my uh, a physical science point of view, um, vectors are directed line segments. In space. Are you some from a physical science point of view? Vectors are directed line segments in space. They have a position, they're pointing somewhere, they're like arrows, right? So something like so like there is a um, a starting position, there's an ending position. Uh, what is the terminology that they use? They use initial and terminal points. So that is um, there is a initial and terminal point. Um, Signifying that there is a direction to a vector. Um, so it's implies, or implying uh, that vectors have direction. So, like that arrow right there says it's going that way. So, the reason why these are useful in the physical sciences is that. Um, when you're dealing with forces, forces have direction and magnitude. How long is the is this thing representing how strong the force is going in that direction? Right. So um, the length of vectors can signify force um, in this case. So length can represent force, for example. Okay, now it's, in, it's important to know in this instance here, again, there's going to be two different representations. I'll show you this is the first one. This is from your standard calculus book. Um, that uh, vectors, as long as they have the same length and direction, they're the same. It doesn't matter where they are in space. Like, for example, that has the same length as that. They're pointing the same direction. So these would be equivalent vectors according to that definition. And um, as you might have seen in textbooks, or maybe you've ever watched like these like neat uh, math documentaries or math videos on YouTube, you might see fields of arrows, which represent some type of like magnetic field or something like this. It's, it's very common to see these in physical sciences. Um, they're just incredibly useful. In fact, there's an entire uh, of course, you can take on these things called vector calculus. Um, but in relation to data science, um, this can be a little bit confusing at first uh, to think of them as uh, directed line segments with length. Um, I think a, a more like, basic interpretation that's useful for, the, for, the, for a data scientist 
is to think of a vector as simply an ordered uh, finite list of numbers. And that's the definition that I'm going to adopt and the one that I think about when I uh, use vectors. So I'll just go ahead and say definition to distinguish it between this one, even though they're equivalent. Um, so I will think of a vector. So a vector is an ordered, which is very important, ordered finite list of numbers. Okay. Um, uh, typically denoted with um, brackets or large parentheses, uh, listed as a column. Um, typically um, written um, as a column. Uh, no, I'll avoid that terminology now. I'll say typically written vertically. And enclosed with brackets. So something like That's a vector. Um, you will also sometimes see open parentheses, like big giant open parentheses like this. It's just another way of writing vectors. I personally favor that because the brackets look more similar to what you would see in a computer program, right? Like, if you were to look at a NumPy array uh, in Python, you would see brackets. If you saw an array in R, you would see brackets. So the, the programmer part of me uh, tends to favor these. But some textbooks, some papers you might read, some articles you might see might write these. But they're equivalent. OK. Now, these are vectors. Um, you may wonder how these are equivalent with these. Well, it's because um, we can think of these vectors as, what's the terminology? Ah. So um, this is like my little side part here to relate this definition to this. Um, this definition. Um, is using the origin as the terminal point, as the uh, as the initial point of the vector. So I should maybe say like this definition uses the origin as the initial point in the previous physical science definition. So in physical science definition. Definition, whatever, running out of rates. And then you can then these become equivalent definitions because what is an ordered collection of, of numbers? You can think of it as a point in space, a point in two dimensional space and three dimensional space. You can think of this as a point in four dimensional space. So, um, because this definition says that um, directed line segments with the same direction and length are equivalent, so these vectors are equivalent. So, these vectors are equivalent to that one, maybe. If I drew it right. 
And that vector could be represented by, um, I don't know, one, two, three, four, four, one. So that vector right there has that coordinate. So you can think of that vector as this column of numbers or one, which that's equivalent to all these. So that's how these definitions become the same. In this simpler definition of vectors, we just assume the term, the original point is the origin, and then we can go from this de definition to this one back and forth. Okay. So, um, but practically speaking for now, all you really need to know is that a vector is an ordered finite list of numbers. It is a generalization of a scalar. A scalar, recall, is just, a, just some number, right? So um, this is a more general setting, OK? We're used to dealing with scalars, which are just numbers, but that's kind of not enough to describe things, right? Uh, attributes of things. So when we need a generalization, mathematicians make up something, and the thing that mathematicians made up are called vectors. Okay, so um, what are the, we need to introduce terminology to describe these things, right? Like how many things, what do you call the things in it, right? So um, the uh, numbers in a vector are called the elements of the vector. Okay, so for example, um, 0 0.2 is an element of the vector A. Okay. Um, what else can we say about vectors? So, oh, the dimension sometimes called uh, the size, but I don't really like that. And you'll see why in a bit. Um, but the dimension of a vector is the number. of elements in the vector. So for example, here, A is a four element vector, okay? So um, what is the terminology I'm going to adopt? I'll say that, um, uh, if A is a vector uh, with dimension N, then um, A is called a n vector. So by the way, n here is just a natural number greater than or equal to one. So um, maybe I should write that somewhere. Um, yeah, let's print this easier. n is some natural number. Mm, that's really it. So this right here, A is a four vector because it has four elements in it. Okay, so um, the ith element of a vector is the ith entry. So each vector has order to it. So uh, I should probably go ahead and write this other way to write vectors. You could also write this vector like this. Uh, 
as a, a tuple, a four tuple in this case. So the ith entry from a vector starting from one, you count over to i, and whatever i you land on, that element is the ith entry. So, um, so, so these are each like pieces of information about vectors. So if a is equal to a one, a two dot 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 a n, then a i is the i element of a. Can all of you read that? Yeah. Okay. So again, this is just ways to describe an ordered list of numbers. Okay. What else? What else do I want to say? Oh, um, if A is an n vector, an n dimensional vector, then we say that um, one way to write that is to say that A is an element of R n. So here, in this case, A would be an element of R4. If you remember from discrete mathematics or discrete, uh, whatever it's called now, <laughs> um, there is this Cartesian product between sets and the Cartesian product yields uh, tuples, ordered tuples. So if you take R across with itself four times, you have possible, it's a set of four tuples of ordered real numbers. This is a four tuple of uh, real numbers. So it's in that set somewhere. And vectors are ordered, so it's in there somewhere. Okay, so um, oftentimes in uh, various, uh, it just it happens all the time in data science, uh, you'll want to concatenate vectors or stack vectors on top of each other. So um, that would look something like this. So. Um, I'll just write it out. You will <laughs> need to concatenate vectors at some point. Um, yeah, that's correct. Or in other words, stack vectors at some point. as a data scientist, I would say in data science. So what do I mean by that? So um, for example, A is the vector of B, C, and D, where B, C and D are vectors. So it's basically just stacking the entries on top of each other to get a new vector. This is called concatenation of vectors. Um, so, um, for example, in N and D, So a more concise way of saying that is like, for example, uh, B is an element of Rm, C is an element of Rn, and D is an element of uh, Rp. 
So B is an n-dimensional vector, C is an n-dimensional vector, and D is a p-dimensional vector. So instead of writing out that they're vectors, I can use this notation. You should infer that they're vectors after that. So with this notation, then I can be a little bit more um, precise about what exactly is going on here if I write the tuple form. So I can say that this is the vector P1 dot 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 to what is B, B M. So those are all the entries from B. And then C is, is B stacked on top of C. So now we're going to start C. C1 through let's, C is n dimensional. And then C is stacked on top of D, and D is p dimensional. So. Okay. Hopefully you can read that. So this is the process of just stacking them on top of each other. And again, this will happen over and over and over. In particular, if you have a matrix, and we'll learn what those are later, not today, but soon, um, you have each column of a matrix is a vector. And sometimes you want to take a vector and you want to squish it. I mean, you want to take a matrix and you want to squish that into a single vector. The way you do that, or well, one way, is to take each column and just start stacking them on top of each other, and you'll get a big long vector. Okay, what else did I want to say about that? So this is important there. Okay. Okay, um, I should also say in this case here, uh, before I move on away from this, that B, C, and D are called sub vectors of A. Okay, um, so uh, now that we know what vectors are, we know that we can concatenate them. We have dimensions of vectors, which are just the number of elements, which are the things inside of the vector. Um, what can we say now? Well, there are special vectors that you will encounter. Uh, I can think of uh, three of them. So, uh, First one, so zero vectors. Are vectors only containing zeros. Okay. Um, one's vectors. So typically with the big one, like, like that, and an n there to represent n-dimensional, so n ones basically. Um, so they're written like that. Wait a minute, I'll avoid the So, okay, so these are vectors containing only ones. Actually, two more. This is a term that you will hear quite a bit. Maybe not in this class, but eventually you will. Sparse vectors. Our vectors. Um, primarily consisting of zeros.
Now these things happen all the time. Um, sparse vectors just occur in data a lot where most entries are zero, especially when dealing with like uh, images where um, the pixel like uh, color intensity could be zero if it's white and most of the image is white, most of the vector zeros. So that would be a sparse vector. And then finally, um, we have unit vectors. Typically denoted by um, E I. So the best way to describe these it would be with examples. So E one in three dimensional space E one zero zero uh, E two in three dimensional space would be zero one zero and you can probably guess what E three would be. Zero, zero, one. Okay. So unit vectors are incredibly important. Um, I sometimes think of them as like selection vectors because the entry, the i entry is one and everything else is zero. And you can use multiplication techniques, addition, subtraction techniques to use these vectors to kind, kind of get information out of a system or something you're looking at. Okay, so um, what else? I think that's the basic terminology of vectors. So now maybe we can talk about um, where vectors might pop up. Okay, so um, what's a so like recently like there was this like uh, this like uh, cryptocurrency like boom right and if you ever seen the like uh, the 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 time and price of a given like Bitcoin, for example, and you watch this over time, you'll see that over the span of an hour, the price of Bitcoin might fluctuate quite a bit. Um, so as like, uh, maybe I'll write like applications maybe, or vectors can be used to represent what's called a time series data. So basically, the ith entry of a vector can correspond to the ith hour in the day um, price of like Bitcoin, for example. So, um, so maybe I'll say B, it could be like 3401. Uh, 27,000, maybe 31,000, um, dot, dot, dot. Suppose it has 24 entries for a day. Maybe it ends on like um, 42,000 or something. So this would be the first hour of the day, second hour of the day, third hour of the day, however you're measuring it. Um, and these are the prices. So this could be, this is time series data. So then you could plot this and say something like, so if this was I, right? Like your I entry of your vector, and then 30,000, 27, 31, 
you get something that kind of looks like that. And these vectors represent that data. Okay. So hopefully even with this like fairly simple kind of contrived example, um, you see that data is inherently, um, there's dimension to data. It's not just a single number, right? There's time and price, for example, in this example here, right? Or if um, you look at the pixels in an image, so we have some image here, and each pixel in this image, so these are the pixels in an image, um, each pixel is represented by a vector. Like for example here, that's going to be a vector and that vector is going to be uh, three different numbers. Or, um, so the standard up until, what was the date on this? Oh, I flipped it too far. I don't know, I don't need to know, but R, G, B. It's an ordered pair of numbers to represent each pixel. So red, green, blue, um, and the intensities of those specific colors are going into these entries. So each one of these pixels is going to be represented by a three-dimensional vector. Okay. So that'd be another place where vectors would pop up. Okay. So again, images, time series data, the list goes on. And the reason why I chose this book for, for this class is that um, they mention quite a bit, uh, not they, yeah, they go into pretty good detail about the applications of the things that we learn. So look at the examples in the textbook once you get it and you'll see what I mean, okay? All right, so am I missing anything? Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording there because this was an introduction to vectors and we'll pick back up with another one in a moment.